Hello everyone, I am Paul, your eHobby guy. Have you ever wanted to measure more than one or two voltages at a time? You can build this four channel voltmeter very inexpensively for less than 25 US dollars and I'll show you exactly what to do and exactly what you need. So stay tuned, let's jump right in. So here's a look at the circuit. This is more of an arts and crafts project than it is an electronics project, but it is something that is very, very useful and it's something that I had a lot of fun building. And so we'll start here over at the left. I have a 12 volt DC power source. You'll see I have an LED here um, tied right at the 12 volt power source so that if there is power available, um, I can see that there is a uh, green LED lit and if I turn it on I'm going to have uh, power to the whole uh, meter. And so of course I had to add eight gratuitous blue LEDs because it's a clear case and this is something that we are, feel compelled to do and it looks pretty cool so I put eight LEDs in there. These uh, represent the four voltmeters which were bought in their entirety on eBay which we'll take a look at a little bit later so they are just in parallel um, with the 12 volts and getting power and coming off each one of course is the test point for each one of these voltmeters I will say that uh, the, the negative test point is internally tied to what will be a ground if we do want to tie this negative into ground I have a banana I'm sorry I have a binding post that I can put a plug into and tie it directly into ground if it needs an absolute ground and so we'll move on from this and we'll look at the electronics first uh, what's required and then we'll look at the mechanical build of the project box and then putting it all together. Here's a look at the voltmeters that I bought on eBay for less than three dollars each uh, from China. Um, they're inexpensive but you can see from the architecture at the back the mounting holes concerned me um, with the proximity to the actual components and so I was going to use metal screws um, to secure them um, but it, they just come too close for comfort for me so I didn't use metal screws and we'll see uh, coming up what I did do to secure these voltmeters in place. Next up we have um, the four binding posts for the positive test points. Um, one black Binding post for the negative test point, it's a common negative, and one green for the ground, um, one main power switch, and four individual voltmeter switches. So that I can turn the each individual voltmeter on and off if necessary to save power. I also made five test leads, four red, one black with mini grabbers on one end, and banana plugs on the other, all to be used as test leads. Now looking at the project box, this is um, a clear box with one end that's removable that I found at the container store for $4. It's 3 inches by 3 inches by 4 inches high and worked perfectly for this project. Before we work on the project box, I had to get some wood to frame out the voltmeters. And so I made a little framework with this piece of wood, which was a quarter of an inch by 3 sixteenths of an inch. And it looks like this, um, so I just measured the inside of the box and the size of the voltmeter displays and I glued it together with regular glue, uh, there's no rocket science to that. I did want it to look better so I just spray painted it white. Getting back to the project box, I uh, put masking tape on all four sides to protect it and I could mark it out easily without uh, permanently marking on the clear surface. And so after I put the masking tape on the four sides, I also labeled the four sides front, back, front, back, right side, and left side so that I, my orientation will be correct uh, when I do mark out my holes and start drilling. And so I marked the left side for a binding post for the negative and the ground, and the right side for four switches and four binding posts, and I labeled them 
B for binding post and S for switch. I also marked the top for a main power on off switch. And so now it came time to drill the holes. So I drilled 5 16 of an inch for the binding posts or 8 millimeters and I drilled a quarter inch holes or 6 millimeters for the switches. One thing I do have to point out here is that when I did drill the holes right when I burst through the other side it did tend to pull the drill bit forward and mark the inside of the case um, and so care should be taken here. So I'm just testing the um, hole size for the switch and as it turns out the thickness of the wall was too much and I didn't have enough threads to tighten the nut. And so there's actually two nuts that came with the switches so I removed the internal nut and uh, it allowed me a little more space to thread on the outer nut and that worked out just fine. The binding poles fit just fine also. To temporarily hold the voltmeters to my wooden framework I dotted them with some crazy glue or super glue to hold them in place until I could more permanently bond them to the wooden frame. To permanently bond them to the wooden frame I used uh, two powered epoxy and just some lollipop sticks because as I mentioned earlier um, I did not want to use metal screws to screw them into the wood just because of the danger of possibly shorting out some components and so it took quite some time to mix the epoxy and um, you can't quite make it out clearly but mix the epoxy uh, apply it and get these two coffee cup stirs um, in place to hold all four voltmeters onto the wooden structure and so to get started I wired the anodes of each diode to a 1k resistor tying them all together to a common positive. I then tied all the cathodes together and I put a 12 volt power across it to see if everything works and it looks just fine. I then tied all of the positives for the voltmeters together and all of the negatives to the voltmeters together and I gave it 12 volts and so far everything's still working. I cut four lengths of red hookup wire and soldered each to the center conductor or the common of the four voltmeter switches. Guess what I forgot to drill a hole for the feed through for this power connector and its drain relief so I drilled a 3 8 hole in the back and I fed the wires in and snapped the strain relief into place. I then soldered the positive wire to the first switch so that the positive can be daisy chained to each switch. All of the negatives were twisted together which was quite a big bundle and I soldered them to the negative of the power lead. As you can see at this point it is becoming quite a jumbled mess of wires. It will come together in the end. I also want to point out that I am using liquid flux to solder these joints together. It does help out when trying to solder many wires together. I next mounted the main power switch and I just want to point out that on all of the switches and the binding posts that were mounted I used liquid thread lock. Since these switches and binding posts get a lot of use they are at risk of coming loose and so liquid thread lock prevents this from happening. And so at this point I just continued to wire all of the switches in a daisy chain as per the schematic that I showed you at the beginning and all of the red binding posts were wired to the test points coming from each of the four voltmeter channels. All of the negatives were already twisted together and were then tied into the black binding post as a common negative. Once this was done all of the binding posts could be mounted and all of the switches could be mounted and then it just came time to get this big jumbled mess of wires all stuffed into this case without shorting anything out and so that's how I proceeded. I will take a moment to mention that when I did drill all of the holes in the housing um, I came back to the project the next day and I saw a lot of cracks had propagated throughout the housing and so 
I had come a long way with it and so I just decided to accept it and so you will see some cracks in the housing I just put some crazy glue or super glue on them to stop the cracks from spreading further apparently this happens uh, from stresses building up in the plastic during the molding process um, maybe a different material would have prevented it from happening but I just wanted to point it out uh, I still think it looks good and it's still very functional and I'm still very very happy with it as you can see I labeled the four voltmeters one to four and the four test leads one to four so that during use uh, there will be no mix-up so here's a very simple uh, voltage divider circuit showing all channels providing real-time readings I hope you enjoyed this video. Please rate this video up and subscribe to my channel. Everything used to make this project cost less than 25 US dollars. Since all of the parts were purchased on eBay with the exception of the clear box and eBay listings expire, I will provide you with search words that you can use to find all the components listed here in the description below. And thank you for watching. See you next time.